All right, so we're going to be talking about presses and handstand, and we really want to start from the ground up. And uh, for me, one of the most important parts of a press to handstand that people kind of gloss over is the idea of compression. Mm -hmm. Compression to me is as important as the strength aspect of a press to handstand. When we talk about compression, it's really the idea of bringing your torso into your legs. Can I compress into a deep pike? Yeah. yeah. So what you need is there's four factors that play into it. There's two strength components, the strength of your abdominals and the strength of your hip flexors to be able to compress, and then the flexibility of your lower back and your hamstrings to be able to allow for that to happen, all right? Okay. So the first exercise we're gonna do is to see whether or not we have a good compression. It's a pike up or a straddle up. So it's gonna be seated down on the ground. And the way it's gonna work is there's gonna be two versions. You're gonna do one straddled and one piked. So the piked one will start like this. And the objective is to bring your hands as far down your legs where you can still, where it's doable but challenging. So essentially what you're trying to do here is hands down on the ground and you're going to lift your legs off the ground as high as you can. 10 reps, keeping your legs off the ground the whole time. So it'll look like this for 10 times. Good. How was that? That's hard. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> You're making it look easy, to be honest with you. It's a lot harder than you would imagine, right? Yeah. So the distance where your hands are along your legs is going to make it challenging, right? Yeah. The further you go, the harder it's going to be. If you're new to this and you need to be starting with your shoulders slightly past vertical and you're back here, that's absolutely fine. But the goal should be to reach a point where it's doable but challenging for 10 reps. So what, where are you at? What's like the final? Uh, I'm, to be honest, I'm okay with this, but not great. More okay. the flexibility than the, the, the hip flexor strength. I can do it about here. Okay. Okay. Now part two is going to be a little bit extra challenging. It's going to be straddle up. So this one is going to be a little bit more, more challenging. Just about a 90 degree. You don't want to go super wide. What we're going to do here is the same thing, reaching out as far as you can and again trying to bring those legs up off the ground. Most people when they first start out will have to start with their hands slightly behind them and be back here, which is okay, and then eventually trying to reach out as far as you can. Let me see where you're at. Ten reps. Three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. Good. Yeah, there it is, right? So you're going to start to feel like a cramp all the way down your leg, like right down that. Eight rep people. <laughs> Most people will have it happen on rep one or two. So the fact that you made it to your eighth rep is a good thing. All right. Not bad. So the idea here being that's your starting point and the goal will be to eventually move further and further down into a deeper compression. This is working on that, that compression from the perspective of the hip flexor so strength point. If I wanted point. to work on this, how many times did you? I, I, knew, I normally do some kind of a core exercise every day, but when I'm working specifically on presses, I'll incorporate this. I'll probably end up doing something like this like two, two times a week. Okay. And I normally do 10 reps of pike and then straddle, three rounds each. Pike, straddle, pike, straddle, pike, straddle. Okay. 10 reps a piece. Cool? Okay. Nice job. Uh, socks are a must for this. but um, So this one's going to be a press drag or a press jump, depending on how strong you are within the position. The goal with this is similar to the first drill, compression being the main objective. The way we're going to do it, we're going to do a forward action and we're going to do a back action. Right? So the first one is going to be traveling forward. We're going to start in a straddle position. Again, not super wide. You don't have to go too wide with it. Hands are going to go down on the ground out in front and you have two, two options. Either you're going to do a drag where your feet are going to be peeling on the ground and finishing in a position where your hands are in line with your feet. If that's too difficult and you feel like you need a little bit more strength, you can jump into that last position a little bit more, okay? So version two would be here, jump, trying to finish again with those feet in line with hands. So let's see if you can drag, let's try the dragging version. Yep, drive the hands down into the floor. Excellent, so when you finish, right now your hands are a little bit in front of your feet. Try to finish with your feet directly in line with your hands. So compress a tiny bit more. Again. Oh, all right. So clearly you're pretty good at this. Try to stay a little bit lower to the ground. You don't have to worry about your hips coming up so high, okay? Stay f low to the ground with your feet. Turn those fingertips a little bit more forward too. Drag, 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 and feet in line with hands. Perfect. That was excellent. Very, very nice, all right? So forward is version one. Easy? Yeah, now we're going to do backwards, okay? Because you're pretty good at this, we're going to make it a little bit extra challenging, okay? It's extra challenging in terms of where you start with your hands, okay? okay. If it's a little bit hard for you, you're going to start with your hands a little bit further out in front of your feet. If you're good at this, your hands are going to be in line with your feet. So part one would be here, 
and the objective is trying to get hips over shoulders over hands, that idea of stacked position, as opposed to thinking about a donkey kick, which is what most people do when they first start out, to do something like this. Yeah. All right, so what we're trying to do is trying to get hips to come up and then just slightly back. So what I want you to try is have your hands directly in line with your feet and see if you can compress into the position from here. Up, 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 and then slightly back. You don't have to go very far back. In fact, just a couple of inches is good enough as long as you're rotating from the hips up first. A little bit further back with the hands. There you go. See if we can get up from there. Up, 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 up. Good. And then back. One more time. Push, push, push. Wow. All right. You're, ma you're making this look way too easy, all right? So next part of this, we're going to work on movement pattern. Essentially, we're just going to be trying to create a good movement pattern from our straddle stand all the way up to handstand and then back down. So we are going to be using a tiny bit of momentum, and it's going to be a jump press to handstand. Okay. All that's really changing here is, is your feet coming up to handstand and rotating back down. So essentially, from hips through to shoulders through to hands, we're going to try to stay as vertical as possible. Okay. All right, so just to show you what this one looks like, if you were to watch from the side, essentially what we're trying to do from here is just jump, touch, back down. Jump, touch, back down, all right? Mm -hmm. So this is, again, moving pattern. Where the direction of the legs are going, coming back down through that straddle and seeing if we can create that over and over again, all right? So I'll stand on the back side here so you don't go past vertical. So you, where do you want my hands? Where I you want go? your hands, yeah, wherever they're comfortable for this one. So that looks pretty good right there, but again, the shoulders are staying over the hands and then your hips are gonna stay over your shoulders. Okay, so that was a little bit short of handstand. Try to get your hips to come over your shoulders a tiny bit more. Up, touch, and then back straddle. Good, again. One more time. Good, all right, come down. Okay, so a couple things that are happening there. The first one was a little bit short, and then you slowly started to build up towards that handstand. Being able to control it is a big piece here. So what I don't wanna see is no matter what, you're gonna keep it short of vertical. All right, so I don't want you to be able to take a step forward, which means you're arching. Oh, okay. All right, so even if you stay really short of handstand, yeah. like on a, a severe angle, that's preferable over going all the way over the top because they're trying to reinforce an idea of when you come to handstand, you're staying in a nice hollow position, all right? Trying to avoid those heels drifting over the top, okay. all right? The other thing that I've noticed, and I think it's just a habit that you've built for a long time, is just the positioning of your hands. Yes, yeah. yeah, so just think about what's happening when you're turning out. The fingertips play a really important role with the stability part of a handstand. So when you're turning the hands out, you're disengaging the three outside fingers, and you're only stabilizing from your index finger and your thumb. So when then something should go wrong and you have that weight a little bit past vertical and you try to adjust, you don't have very much in terms of your fingertips to be able to actually control yourself back to vertical. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do with your index finger and thumb, but that's why you have to walk, yeah. right? So over time, we're just gonna slowly start to get those hands to be a little bit more forward, but I know you've probably been doing it for years and years, so it's a little yeah. bit of a challenge to be able I to know. change it. I never really that's where you're strong. Even, and so someone was like, it's so funny how you walk. Like, okay. <laughs> but everything that we do, whether it's a press or whether it's a handstand walk, we should try to equate it back to what we do on our feet, okay? So we don't walk on our feet this way, right? Again, just for stabilization purposes, having the toes face a little bit more forward is going to give us the ability to push off those toes. Okay. So the same thing in our static handstand, being able to use those fingers effectively is going to be pointing them uh, forward. Okay. Let's tr try five more of the jump presses with the fingertips facing a little bit more forward. So like we talked about, don't worry about hitting handstand. If you're, I'm more worried about the body position than where you finish, okay? So if you end up a little bit short of vertical, that's fine. Jump up, hollow, that's it. That's the one I wanna see. Four more just like that. Hup, hollow, good. Three more, Hup. perfect. Two more, and last one. And that's professional style right there, okay? That was no joke, that was okay. great. Not only from a, a positional standpoint, but from stability too, your fingertips were in a position where you can control it a lot better, right? Yeah. I know it's a little awkward at first because you've done it for so long this way, but that's how you should be training okay. it, especially when, when you're working on skill work. Yeah, it, yeah. All right, Thanks. that was good, excellent, really good. All right, so parallettes, very useful tool. These parallettes are more gymnastic style parallettes where they're a little bit lower to the ground. So they're gonna be a little different than one that you'd normally find in your box with a little bit higher. So it's gonna be a tiny bit more challenging, but since you're pretty good at this, well, you'll be able to do it, all right? This is a press hip raise, all right? The objective of this is to start in an L-sit and then you're going to lift your hip up towards uh, hip over shoulder over hand position and trying to hold your peak position as high as you can get it. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Your feet will be essentially, if you're doing it at its peak point, your legs will be completely vertical and your hips will be over shoulders, over hands. In an all right? ideal world. In an ideal world, <laughs> if we can eventually get to that point. Yeah. We'll see where it's at. So the starting point will be in an L-sit. And like I said, because this is low parallettes, you're not going to have that much space to pass through. So if you're here and this is as far as you can go, that's as far as you can go. All right. So what we're going to try to do is start low, come up to your peak point. We're going to hold it five seconds, come back to an L, and you're going to try that one more time. So L, hip raise, L, hip raise. And up, compress. Good. Point the to toe. Oh. All right. Where did you feel that? Again, here, right? I love it here too. So those are the two compression areas, yeah. right? Abdominals and hip flexors are what bringing you know, that position in place. Was that, all <laughs> <laughs> that was it. If you would have been able to hold it there, I'd be like, okay, we're going home. Really we're going home. We don't need to do that, all right? So as high as you can go where you can hold it for that full five. Hold one, two, three, four, five. Back to the L. And one more time. Up. Hold. One, two, three, four, five. And down. Good. Okay. So it might not feel like very much is happening there, right? You're not really going too much of an angle with your hip, but it's actually a pretty effective exercise in terms of getting the compression in place and slowly starting to get the shoulder activation for that turnover. All right. And like we said, because these parallettes are so low to the ground, it's forcing you into a much deeper compression. All right. If you had higher parallettes or you're doing it on matadors or parallel bars, you're going to have the ability of getting the hips higher, swinging or having some space for your feet to get through. So the compression is going to be a little bit easier for you. This is extra difficult. All right. So ideally, what we're going to try to do is build towards a position where you start in that L sit and then get up, 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 up and holding that position here where those legs are vertical and the shoulders are over, the hands are over the feet. That's where we're visually getting to. So impressed when you do that. <laughs> That's why I have no legs. Because I'm a gymnast. All right. It helps. All right. Very good. Awesome. You want to try one more? Yeah. All right. Let's see it. Five seconds at your peak point. Hold one. Two, three, four, five. Back out. Excellent. Yay! Good job. That was huge. This one will be a negative. All right. In the gymnastics world, we use a ton, ton of tempo, negative work, working on trying to control it from the top down. All right. So what you're going to do, you're going to kick up the handstand, and your goal is going to be to take 10 seconds to get down to, your, to the ground. 10-second okay. tempo. So what that means is you're going to go first five seconds to your widest straddle, and then five seconds with a hip roll back down to the ground. One, two, three, four, five, then roll five more seconds down to the ground, okay? okay? I'll just be again on this side to make sure that you don't fall over the top, so don't worry about having to take a step. I'll okay. be that wall there for you, and you're gonna try to control it all the way down. On your own, slow, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. so. You don't have to come into a straddle. That's actually harder right now. Let's just try to come down to a straddle stand. So when you start out, slower with that initial straddle, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay? okay? Nice and still, go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, roll the hip, seven, eight, nine, ten, down. All right, this is unfair. These are the kind of things that take like months and years for people to learn and you're doing it perfectly every time. When was the last time you did an exercise like that? It's been a while. Yeah. How did that feel? It felt good. Feel that control yeah. on the way down? Yeah, it did. Okay. I'm like, I'm, when I'm going down, I'm not sure if I'm going to have control. Mm -hmm. And then once I start, I'm like, okay, I've got this. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. That's exactly what I want to see. A nice straddle position, the widest point uh -huh. before you think about getting those hips to rotate through. That wide straddle will allow you to actually get into a better compression. So you're always thinking about wide straddle before you think about rolling the hips under. Okay. All right? Yeah. That was awesome. Thanks. Nice job. You ready for this drill now? Mm-hmm.
We got the mat stack up here for a very specific reason, giving you some elevation with your press to handstand, all right? So essentially the reason why we do this is because getting off the ground, that first little bit off the ground is the most challenging part of the press to handstand. So if we can take that part out of the equation, what we do is give yourself the ability to understand the mechanics of the up and down of the press without having to worry about having the strength from the ground, all right? So we're basically gonna be giving ourselves a mechanical advantage here. Mm -hmm. Normally, the height of the boxes, ideally what we're going to be doing here is setting up so that your baseline will be a 90 degree hip angle. So it will vary a little bit according to how tall you are. Somebody a little taller is going to start with a higher box, but what you're looking for is basically a 90 degree hip angle, legs at horizontal and torso at vertical. Okay. We're going to start a little bit lo lower today because you're a little bit more advanced, but basically what I want to show you is that as you become stronger and stronger, we're going to shave away layers and you're gonna slowly work your way down. Instead of thinking okay. about it as an upward action, we're gonna be thinking about it as a downward action, okay? okay. So the way it's gonna work, I'll just show you the first one. Your hands will go down on the ground and your legs will go to the outside edges of the mats. Here, you can start from your toes or you can start from the balls of your feet if you want. And I want you to start with your hands fairly close to the box so you're getting into that uh, stacked position, hips over shoulders over hands. From there, you're gonna think about going out wide, getting into that press, and then slowly again coming back down to the box. All right? Okay. So again, this shouldn't be too difficult for you. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do this, but let's see if we can control it back down to the box. Stay with that nice hollow position as you get up into the handstand, up, 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 hollow and then control it back down, slow down, perfect. Okay. Too easy, too easy, was that good? Okay, yeah. so let's see, it. take a second, and what we'll do here. Next layer, four inches off. We'll see if we can do it with a little bit lower setting. And what we're gonna, our objective here is to slowly chip away and find as low as you can do it, where you're able to do it with control, balance, and good position, where it's still challenging for you. Same thing, let's see hips over shoulders over hands and try to stay hollow all the way through that handstand. Don't let those heels go out wide, wide straddle the start, up, up, up. Stay with it, I got you. Back down, that's okay, that's all right. So trust that I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna let you fall past vertical, okay? So I'm gonna be there as a wall for you, but keep thinking as your heels come up, keep this intact. Try not to let the heels come over the top. No matter what, stay hollow, all right? Let's try one more at this level. Take a second, take a second. Gymnasts normally take like eight hours between turns. So <laughs> like, you don't, you, like, you don't go. <laughs> no, you don't need a three, two, one go mentality here, right? You can take as much rest as you need, but um, make sure you're fully fresh, make sure your heart rate is down before you go to the next rep, okay? When you start out here too, you're starting with your feet together. Let's start wide, because right now you're doing kind of a pike and then okay. straddle. Start straddled and then come right back down. It'll be a little bit easier. Wide straddle, wider, 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 keep hollow, 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 and then bring it back, slow, that was better, good, good, all right? The, hard, the down part is harder for me. Yeah, so you did the down yeah. part really well, you just, uh, once you get to the top, it's a little bit of a more of a mental thing than anything else. You get there and you're like, okay, come down, as opposed to really focusing on the downward part. You're capable of doing it, I've already seen you do it really well, so it's more of just the mental side of it, all right? All right, one more layer, okay? Let's take these off completely. And this will be the last one that we do, okay? And then, how would we do it? And then we'd get to the floor, right? And then you get to the floor, right? And then actually the next step would be basically a deficit. So you would turn around and have your hands on the box oh, really? and your feet down below. Yeah. Let's try that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this one first. <laughs> okay, wide feet, big straddle. Straddle, straddle, straddle. Stay hollow, stay with that. Stay with it, control, control, control. Slow, excellent, I like that one the best. Even though you didn't get fully open, that one I prefer because it, you kept the body in the hollow position that I want. Okay. That was really, really good. Yay, How'd that nice. feel? Good. You wanna try one from the ground? Yeah. Okay, take 30 seconds, we'll move these out of the way, and you'll try it on your own. And we'll be able to tell whether or not, you know, there's a distance between that, uh, that eight inch height and you doing it to the ground, whether or not somewhere in there is kind of your uh, sweet spot of being able to do it without uh, jumping. So give me, give me a couple things that you're thinking about here that we've went over. I'm thinking about, um, 
compressing, like keeping my, so my feet not go out, but compressing so that they go Good. straight up. Almost Perfect. like I'm in between like a wall. That's exactly right. And getting my shoulders forward enough so that I'm in balance and I'm not kicking back. Yep. So you want your shoulders to be in balance, but not so far forward that it turns into a planche press, okay. right? Keep thinking almost like there's a rope tied around your waist and someone's yanking your waist up through the ceiling. That'll help kind of create that compression, but make sure the, the strength of your shoulders is staying directly up over your hands. All right, let's do it. Wide straddle, up, 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 control, and then guide it on the way down. Ooh. That was perfect. perfect. That was perfect. So this one is, we're gonna be starting <clears throat> here, okay? So that means that you have to get your hips up even more than what we were doing from before, okay? Yeah. So this is forcing our hips into a lower position, so it's giving us just a little bit of a disadvantage. This will be your last exercise, so make sure you're fully fresh so you can show off for everybody. Same thing, stay hollow when you come up. Try not to let those heels come over the top and then guiding yourself back down. Hips up first, up, 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 control. Slow, slow, slow. Yes. Yay. Hell yeah. You're making this way too easy. Yeah. Way too easy. How much of a deficit can you do? Um, so some of it will depend on how compressed you can be, right? Yeah. So it's gonna get to a point where you can only go so much before it's gonna become very challenging. But what you'll see a lot of is like people kind of press out of like pools and stuff. Yeah. Where they get a little of buoyancy, but essentially you're starting all the way with your legs basically in the water and then pressing out of it from there. So, so the depth can be, really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That was awesome though, Yay. fantastic. Thanks. You're pressing handstand, next part we'll be working on your straddle stalder press, but that'll be stage two, all right? Hell yeah, huh? When are we doing that one? Uh, later. later. <laughs>